Hey guys, do you ever get that experience or that sensation, that feeling that you are spiritually weary, spiritually dry? If you do, then I do not think that you are alone. Uh, talking with friends recently, there seems to just be a few people that are experiencing that, that are feeling that. And I don't think that's a surprise after the last 14 months or so uh, when I'm recording this that we've been in pandemic. Um, you know. If you're feeling you're lacking that spiritual vitality, it's that spiritual life, then you are not alone. You know, I would recognize that spiritual dryness in things like, uh, you know, not, not feeling as motivated to read the Bible, struggling with prayer, trying, it's hard to engage uh, in your relationship with God. There's definitely been times where uh, I've had that sensation and there's been times over the pandemic where I've had that, but probably before that as well, there's been different seasons and different times where I felt that I'm just in a, you know, not in the most uh, vibrant of places in my walk with God, but that's okay. And I actually uh, recently wrote a, a poem called A Desolate Place, which I'll put in the description about a bit of that experience uh, recently. Um, but it's so important, it can all affect us all differently. You know, you even see it in the Bible. You see people like Elijah, you know, one of the great prophets of the Old Testament. You know, he has this massive, amazing victory at Mount Carmel against the, the, the prophets of, you know, false god. And then he goes into this sort of, uh, he literally goes into the wilderness, into the desert, uh, and then he just lies down and is like, God, I've had enough. I want to die. Um, and God gives him food, rest, and then uh, he's restored in that way. You know, King David, he was another guy in the Old Testament, one of Jesus' ancestors. And it was maybe a bit more subtle for him where he was like, you know, he just sort of lost his connection with God. He lost his passion for God. He let his eyes and his heart wander and he committed adultery, he committed murder. And it was only when his, uh, the prophet Nathan came and uh, challenged him on that, that he realized that he'd gone off track in that. And we see in the Psalms, the sons of Korah, worship leaders uh, writing Psalm 42, which is just talking about an expression, a longing of the soul. Uh, it feels dry, feels a lack of joy. And it remembers that, wow, I used to be passionate. <laughs> I used to have so much joy, I used to have so much peace, but I've seemed to have lost that. These kinds of experiences are not foreign to the Bible. Uh, they're not a surprise necessarily to God. So you need to know if you're experiencing that right now, you are not alone. Um, you know, all followers of Jesus that I know, anyway, uh, maybe there's some out there, uh, that's not, but actually that do experience these seasons of dryness. Um, let me let me share it. You know, in the same ways that uh, you know our our human relationships can't just be based on our feelings. You know, okay, I like you one day, then the next day I don't like you, or I'm in a good place one day and I'm not in a good place. Not depending on what side of the bed that you get out of. We know that our human relationships don't work like that. You know, life is a little bit up and down. There are different types of seasons that we go through in our emotions, in our souls, and that's okay. And actually, with our relationship with God, there are days where you know, I felt disconnected or distant from God, and there are days where I felt closer to God as well. You know, and I've come to learn that I can't trust 100% my feelings on the matter which I'm so grateful for, that my relationship with God is not based on my feelings. Thank God, right? Actually, we are saved by grace, by what Jesus has done on the cross for us. And that's why we're saved, not because we feel that we're in a good place. I'm encouraged always by uh, Charles Spurgeon, who said, when you cannot trace God's hand, you can trust his heart. So even if we're feeling a bit disconnected, maybe we're not sure, where our relationship with God is at, we can still trust him because he is good. Romans chapter eight, which is an incredible book, uh, well, incredible chap incredible book, but also incredible chapter, Romans eight, uh, it says in verse 35, what shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? The inference from this verse, obviously, is no, nothing can separate us from the love of Jesus. Not distress, not tribulations, and we've had plenty of them recently. But actually, these cannot separate us from our love of God. You know, I think sometimes I need to take myself, my feelings, a little bit less seriously and take God and who he is even more seriously. His promises 
are secure. And we see throughout the Bible that there are just moments and times that of wilderness, of desert time kind of seasons in people's lives, actually restoration always comes. That is one of the mega themes of the Bible, of hope being restored, of faith being restored, of truth being restored. Where we're at, if we're feeling in a spiritually dry place right now, that is not where you will remain. There is always rescue in that. So if you're feeling a bit like you're stuck in the mud, <laughs> you're lacking that spiritual vitality, let me encourage you uh, that, first of all, that you're not alone, that you're not <laughs> a weird Christian, um, but actually there is a way you can take a step forward. Um, and sometimes that means that our feelings might take some time to catch up, but that's okay. Um, one of the things I found that's really helped me would to be spiritually refreshed in those times of sp feeling spiritually dry is honesty. Honesty and three three people I guess to to be honest with first yourself you need to know yourself you need to be aware of what's going on in your soul you know I've often realized that the problem if I'm uh, struggling my walk with God is not at God's end it's at my end it's something that's affected me something that's challenged me and so I'd need to take some time to take stock work out okay where is my soul at Sometimes I've been listening to the wrong influences in my life. Maybe I've simply been watching uh, too much Netflix or listening to uh, the wrong type of music or, or whatever it is. I've allowed other voices to speak louder into my heart than God's voice. Uh, it could be that I've, you know, if we're honest, deliberately uh, chosen not to follow God in something and that's caused a little bit of dryness in my walk with him as well. Or maybe it's simply a result of current circumstances. But regardless, it's so important to be honest with ourselves um, and where we can, take responsibility uh, and bring my attention back to who God is. So first of all, we need to be honest with ourselves. Secondly, to be honest with God. And that's maybe a little bit scary, but he can handle it. Um, you know, God already knows us. He knows our heart. He knows our mind. He loves us. And when it comes to him, we're not going to surprise him. <laughs> We're not going to shock him. Uh, you know, we can be honest with him. I can't. I think I've lost the number of time, count the number of times where I've said, "God, please help me to want to pray. Help me to want to read the Bible." And actually, I think He loves those kinds of prayers, honest, authentic prayers. Absolutely. And let's be honest with Him. James four verse eight says this: "Draw near to God, and He will draw near to you." What a promise! What a promise! And thirdly, to be honest with someone else. Faith in Jesus is personal, but it's not private. It's personal, but not private. God has placed followers of Jesus in communities called the church. And we need one another. We need brothers and sisters in Christ. We are designed not to do life alone. There are times when you will need encouragement in your walk with God. There are times where I need encouragement in my walk with God. There are moments where we all go through these uh, dry seasons as well. But actually, I believe that God wants to bring us through these. He wants to restore, he wants to bring hope. And he wants to teach us in these moments, actually, we can come to him, even if we don't feel like it. I think I see the times in my life where I feel spiritually dry as invitations to draw close to God, not just to run away from him, but actually to come close to him. You know, he wants to, to bring us close to him. So that's an invitation that he's extending to you today. Will you accept that? Will you say, actually, even though I might not be feeling it, I'm going to choose to come close to you. So why don't you just take a moment to reflect? You know, what, you know where, where are you looking for? What, or what are you looking in for? The things that will restore your soul. If you're feeling spiritually dry, are you turning to God in these times? Let me encourage you to think about that, to do that, or are we looking for comfort in the wrong things? You know, and do you need to be honest with yourself, with God, with someone else? It's worth it, it's hard, but it's worth it. Keep going guys, it can be tough sometimes, but you know what, it's worth it to persevere. Thanks so much for checking in, and I'll see you soon.